Hello everyone and welcome back. So this time we're going to be talking about torsion again. So what we're going to learn about this time, well we're going to understand how stresses on oblique planes are determined when we're talking about torsion. We've done that for shear stress and for axial loads. Now let's talk about it for when we're twisting things. We're also understand how the our sign conventions are going to be. So for this lecture we're just going to get through stresses on those oblique planes and go through some applications. Now, if you look at all of these bars, um, you can see that they all failed under loading. Now, the loadings were different, um, but you can know, all the loadings were a torque. But look at these. Look at these planes. Some of them are almost perpendicular, not quite. Others, you see we have this 45 degree angle cut here and a 45 degree angle cut here. Now, how can we determine which plane a, um, a material is going to fail along? You know, where is it going to fail? How is it going to fail? Why is it going to fail? Well, we're going to be talking about that some today. So, we had our elastic torsion formula, which we got last time. And it can be used to calculate the maximum shear stress. Now, obviously, the maximum shear stress happens on the surface, where our radius is at a maximum. So if it's going to fail somewhere, it's most likely going to start failing on that surface. However, while that is talking about that in-plane shear stress, um, what about the other planes? What if we angle it? Um, how is the shear stress going to change? Could we actually see a normal stress? Because remember these torques, we never actually saw a normal stress be caused by this. So we really need to understand where the true maximum is located, or at least where Shear stress and normal stress are maximums to help understand where our material might fail. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at a very small section of that exterior surface for a circular bar, which is experiencing a uniform torque T. Okay, so here's our little section. And as we did with all those um, axial bars, we're going to just look at it and we're going to cut at an angle and say, well, what would the stresses be on that angled section? What would the stresses be on that angled section? Now, all of our shear stresses are the uniform and the same. They have to be to maintain equilibrium. And we can get all of those using our elastic torsion formula. But we don't really care about the surfaces. We want to know what happens on the interior surface of this little element. So you got an angle theta. So when we do that, we can introduce an NT coordinate system. We have the tangent direction, which is going up the hill, and the normal direction, which is going out of it. And because of doing this, we also introduce new stresses that have to be solved for. We're going to have a new shear stress on this tangent plane. Now, we're going to go ahead and transform the stresses into forces by choosing a differential element dA for them to act on. That's the little dA you see right here, and that's that surface. And when we do that, we can then sum all of our forces in the tangential and the normal directions. Now, let's look at this real quick to see if we can figure out what's going on. Okay, so we have dA right here, which makes these side lengths dA sine theta and dA cosine theta. We then have a shear stress, which is acting on those sides. And it's acting across an area, which makes this a force. All these are now forces because we're multiplying a stress by that differential area. And then I have to take into account the direction. So I'm doing this in the forces in the tangential direction, which is going up this hill. And so I will have this little force element times cosine of theta. And then this little force element times sine of theta. Cosine of theta and sine of theta. We're trying to figure out why it's that particular angle. Well, you can break these up into triangles if you wish, 
and do a little bit of trigonometry to see where the sine theta and cosine theta comes from. In fact, let's do that together. Okay, so this is a right angle. That would be theta right there. And I have some little force. I want to figure out what the component of that force is that is on this surface. So if I redraw my little guy right here, let's do it. I have theta, and this is just this triangle that I'm drawing right here. I have my force, which is tau y x dA sine of theta. And the component that is on the tangential direction is over here. That's the T side. Well, it's opposite over hypotenuse, which is sine of theta. And something similar happens for the rest to get us cosine of theta for the first one. So I won't walk through all of these, but that is where it's coming from. We're just breaking it into components that are going along these directions. Now, if we solve this, what we get is that our shear stress on that new normal tangential plane is going to be equal to our original shear stress times cosine of 2 theta. And our normal stress is going to be equal to our original shear stress times sine of 2 theta. And this actually brings us to a very interesting realization. Because failure is not always straightforward. And when we look at this, we can learn a lot about it. We can see, okay, reasons that it might have failed at those 45 degree angles is because that is where my normal stress is a maximum, actually. Where at 40 degree angle, 5 degree angle, all those are going to have a maximum normal stress. So perhaps that's why it failed. For this one right here, you can see it failed closer to a 0 degree angle or a 90 degree angle. And that's where shear stress is at a maximum. So perhaps that one's weaker under shear while the other ones are weaker under normal stress. And quite honestly, this is a hollow bar and its deformation and failure is actually very, very complex. But you get the idea. Now, the second thing I wanted to point out is that when we were looking at tension and compression, our shear stress and normal stress were related like follows. The shear stress was only ever half of the max normal stress. However, with torsion, that is not the case. The shear stress, sorry, the maximum shear stress and the maximum normal stress have the same magnitude. They have the same magnitude. But as with last time, their maximums are still 45 degrees out of phase. Okay, so we'll stop here for today. Thank you all for listening, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.